Welcome back to Fire to Fork. Now today we're going to be making um, we're going to be making roast potatoes, but not roast potatoes like you've seen them before. These are I don't know what to call them, but they look incredible. I've never made them, but I've seen them made. The theory, the whole process makes total sense to me, and I just thought let's suck it and see. We'll we'll just do this on camera, and I reckon they're going to be incredible. I will be serving them with other things, obviously, um, a bit of marin, bit of um, toasted zucchini, um, roasted zucchini, but the star of the show is the potatoes. So, they take a while, so I'm going to get into it now. First things first, go and light a fire. Once again, I'm feeling like an upside down fire. So, let's do, oh, that's probably a bit much. Grab a bit of this stuff. A little bit of smaller, smallish stuff on top. Nothing too tiny. Bit of Zippo Tinder roll. And just leave that for a bit. While we're waiting for that fire, I think we get started on peeling some potatoes. It's just me, so I think three spuds will do. Slice these up a bit smaller. Ooh, <laughs> suctioned onto the knife. And we'll drop all that in a pot of water. And what we're trying to do here is actually just make um, mashed potatoes. Bit of salt and lid. I'm actually going to use this to catch the marin. It's, doesn't, it's not bad marin bait. Uh, private property, we have a uh, Marin Dam here. I'm not just roguing it out in the bush out of season. It's all legit. You're allowed to, so if it's not in a public waterway, you're allowed to catch the Marin that you put in your own dam, which is, you know, reasonable, I think. Okay, let's go and sort this out. Look, it's only been a couple of minutes, so the fire's still very much in its infancy, but that doesn't matter. We're in no real rush. May as well just put the pot on and then go and do something else. So I'll see you in a while. A few tins later. All right, these have been doing their thing and the um, potato skins did their thing. They're actually about like 12 in that pot, but I need one for dinner. So, um, we are going to just pour this, um, pour the excess water off this. Okay, so <clears throat> what we wanted here is some really soft potatoes. So these are really soft, because uh, we are, as I said before, making mashed potatoes. Um, you don't need a potato masher for this. If you boil them for ages and ages so they're extra, extra soft, you definitely don't need one. Fork is totally fine. Um, also because we're not trying to make super, super smooth mashed potatoes. If you're trying to do that, then yes, bring all the, all the help you can get. But that's not what we're doing. We're also not going to add milk or butter or anything like that. I'm just going to mash these up while they're warm, but I'm not going to do the rest until they've cooled down a little bit because I have to use my hands and these are too hot to touch. But give that a couple of minutes. All right, that's cooled down a little bit. I've made myself a little afternoon ronda. <laughs> if you don't know what a ronda is, it's in my cookbook. I will do a video on it at some stage. And if you do know what a ronda is, try it with Jamison instead of rum. It's really good. Uh, okay, so um, what we're gonna do, hands are a little bit dirty. Sorry, little mate. Just, gonna, just a bit of ash on them from the from the firewood. 
just put the lid on it so he doesn't climb out. Marin are very good climbers. Uh, okay, what I'm putting in here is just uh, about sort of a tablespoon of um, just normal plain flour. Uh, I reckon this would probably work very well with gluten-free flour. And this is corn flour. So equal parts. A little bit of salt. Uh, might chuck a touch of pepper in there as well. Now I've seen these called potato bubbles, I believe. Um, and that's sort of apparently how they turn out. As usual, I saw this recipe on the interweb and decided to make it. Same as what you guys are doing, I guess. Oh, it's like a... Sort of a... I don't know, like a paste sort of a consistency. Mm, I might need a little bit more flour in there. Help it bind together a bit more. And this corn flour should help it crisp. And fluff. Okay. I reckon I should have done this in baking paper. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll try and get some baking paper out. Bit of potato with my marin water. A little chunk of potato in there, mate. You can eat that. underneath the breadboard so that the internet police don't get me. So we want to make this a kind of a long log. You know what? This needs to be cold. This is not working when it's hot. I'm going to put that in my freezer for a little bit and we'll come back to it. Alrighty, <clears throat> I pulled this out of the freezer. Uh, it's cold, it's been about an hour. Now what I want to do is fresh piece of baking paper because baking paper goes a bit soggy in the freezer. A little bit more flour. Um, touch more corn flour. Actually, before I start this, I'm gonna get my oil and put it on the heat so that when I'm done, I'm ready to put them in the, in the hot oil. We want it kind of, I don't know, like a, a centimeter of oil in there. Enough to shallow fry them. So that's a liter bottle, so I'm talking about 700 mils of oil in, in this size skillet. And chuck that on the fire. All right. Let's try and prep these things. So you want to kind of make a little bit of a log, a bit of flour just so it doesn't stick. And because that flour is going to crisp up really nicely at the end. And then, get your little bite, fork on there, give it some sort of, that'll add to the crisp. Because it's the more sort of um, bits, more uh, jutty out bits to get crispy, the better. Alright, that's going to be enough for me for now, so that's going to go in the fridge. Now, what else are we eating with this potato? Well, we've got, let's get this cleaned up a bit. Alright, so to go with this potato, we've got one little marron, which I'm just going to put a little bit of fresh garlic, sliced garlic on. 
really simple. Drizzle with a very high quality of olive oil. Pepper. And salt. That's it. That'll be good to grill in a minute. Yeah, I'll, I'll see what this oil's doing and then we'll, I'll try and guesstimate timing. I've also got a little bit of zucchini, which is just sitting in a bit of extra virgin olive oil, balsamic salt and pepper, just to grill up. 175, it needs to be 180. Let's go and have a look, see how these things go. Oh, a little bit high, so that's at 200 now. But I'll leave that for a second. All right, I've just dropped one in, just to actually cool the oil down. So that one's just gonna cook a lot faster and it might be a complete disaster. So let's put that back on the heat. It's amazing, you just drop one little thing in and it goes from like 200 to 170. That's why you gotta keep it on the heat. I'm not expecting anything from that first one I dropped in. I don't think these are gonna take very long. The Spuds, so I'll just chuck the marin on. One on lower heat. I'll put it off to the side here. I'd love to use my Osbri for these, but I just don't have room on the, the hot plate. Got a lot going on here. Okay. How are these going? Yep, going well. You should never flip marin, by the way, or pretty well any shellfish. You should always just try and do it shell side down, cook it slowly. Prawns you can flip, or shrimp if you're American, or an old 80s Australian ad. Come and say good day. I'll slip an extra shrimp on the barbie for you. You don't have to use a heat gun like this. You can use it like a meat thermometer or something like that. That's fine. I just find the heat guns really easy. Two very boring minutes later. These should be soft and have some grill marks. They're all looking good. Let's put them off to the side, keep them warm. The marin meat should be white in the middle. This is not a marin focused video. I will do a thing on how to barbecue marin properly. But this is just an afterthought, to be honest. This is just protein to go with the, the star of the show. I've got to say, it's a pretty bloody good protein, though. I think I might have nailed this timing by complete coincidence. That's looking very close. I want these to be really quite browned. All right, I think they look ready and delicious. Everything in me wants to eat this right now, but I need to do gratuitous B-roll right now. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. It's like a little pillow. It's way more salt. Um, my word. Hear that? Okay. Marin.
Tell you what, the better the olive oil you put on there, the better it tastes. I know that one doesn't have a label. I can't actually remember the brand. I had to pull the brand label off for a commercial shoot. Mm. With steak, with chicken, with prawns, with more of itself, with a beer. Uh, speaking of which, as if it wasn't going to go excellently with beer. How's the zucchini? Mm, that's really good. Bit of marin. Bit of crunchy boy. Bit of soft boy. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I'm doing that again. Oh, thank you so much for watching. That is a seriously nice dinner. And tonight I'm having dessert. So the next episode is going to be the dessert that I cook directly after this. So I'll see you in that one. Cheers. Oh, Marin. <laughs>